Hi everybody, it's Janet and welcome to my channel. Well, guess what came in the mail for me today? Yep, it's the new foil quill magnetic mat and I'm super excited to try it out. I ordered this from Swing Design. I'll put the link in my video description below, but they sent this little card along and it shows where there are some free art files. I checked this out and there's actually 50 designs. I'll put the link in my video description because they're free to anybody and you can access those. And then there's also some idea guides for the silhouette. And finally, they included a card that's advertising the different vinyls they sell. I highly recommend Swing and I'll put their uh, links also in my video description. So let me take this apart for you. I'm gonna grab my craft knife. I've noticed that there are four little places here that have been glued down. So we can take a look at what this product is. Now what comes in this package is the magnetic mat, which is just a metal mat, and then also four mag magnets. And you can see down here, there are the magnets. There's some directions in here, and it just took me a little bit to pull everything apart and get that out of the way, so let me do that. Okay, so here are the instructions. It first shows you how to make a large project and a small project. And you'll notice that it uses the short magnets down at the bottom and the tall ones on the side. It also indicates that you should not use the magnets at the top, but I can tell you I have already done that. It seems to work okay with my Cricut Explore. However, I'm not advocating that, so you know, do that at your own risk. I don't want you to wreck your machine and blame me. All right, so here it's showing to put the mat right onto your sticky mat and then to put your paper on and then finally your magnets. And it gives you some description about how to apply your magnets. And then down here we have a picture of a roller, which is typical in machine. It's telling you to watch out for these discs or guides. You wanna make sure that they're out of the way of the uh, magnets. And then finally, it's just saying put it in the way you normally would, whatever the manufacturer says, like you would normally for your machine. There are a couple other things that come in the package. There's an extra bit of instructions here and then a cardboard backing. But I also realized I had a boo-boo on my mat right here. So it got bent somewhere along the way. <clears throat> so it's pretty thin. I folded it back and it's not really gonna bother anything, I don't think. So I'm not gonna return it just for that, but it did have a little bit of a, a shipping problem there. So you may also experience that, I'm not sure. Here's the magnet, you can see it's very flexible and it has a good amount of sticking power. Now it feels to me like there's a plastic coating or something on this, but I can't find any edges to it. So if it's there, it's very securely stuck to it. We'll see if it shows up later. Also included is this little instruction sheet to the left of me. And this is giving you some tips if you're having trouble with your machine bringing the mat into it. At the top of the instructions here, we've got a side view of a machine and it's suggesting that you level the platform that helps the mat move into your machine. It also says at the bottom corner that you shouldn't use any paper thicker than one millimeter and then you might wanna take out the blade right here. And then finally it says uh, move your magnets about one to two inches down from the top of your mat and that will help it feed in also. I'll probably want to keep this in mind. So what I'm going to do is set up an old mat here to use as a permanent foil quill magnetic mat holder. And I've already put down two one inch pieces of um, double sided tape. And this is very sticky adhesive. This is the kind that I use for scrapbook making when I really need some strong, strong adhesive. So I'm going to use this adhesive to hold my magnetic mat on the on there pretty much permanently. So while I'm doing this, I just want to tell you guys that, you know, I did use my mat. Obviously, I'm recording this after the fact, and um, it had no trouble going through the machine. I even put my magnet at the top, and it seemed to work just fine. Again, I have an Explore, the very first Explore, but I assume Explore Air and 2 is probably quite similar. But just be careful about that because you could hurt your machine. In some ways, I'm not babying my machine at all because it's, it's dying on me and I'm actually kind of on the hunt for a good used machine to replace the one I have. I've just worn it out. <laughs> so anyway, I didn't uh, have any fears of trying it just to see what would happen. And again, it did work. So 
now that I've got the adhesive ready to go, I'm just going to carefully line up the guides on the magnet mat to the existing Cricut mat. Now obviously if I wanted to go ahead and use this on my brother machine or something, it could be an issue because I've got it pretty much permanently attached here. Uh, so that's one drawback of doing what I've done if you have multiple machines. But for the most part, I'm envisioning I will use my Cricut. Okay, so let's get started trying to use this product. First I'm going to bring out a piece of watercolor paper and this comes from the Strathmore watercolor pad which I really enjoy using because there's no waste with this if you're doing A2 size cards. One sheet you can cut in half and you've got two panels that are just perfect. So I'm going to use one of these to lay out on my mat. Uh, I'm going to in the end choose to put it vertically in the middle and then you know, I was thinking about this thick paper and the fact that it probably wouldn't stick very well with the magnets. So I decided just to be safe, I would use some washi tape. So you're going to see here that I decided to be sure and place the washi tape down. Now I think for regular cardstock, I would not bother to do this, but again, this, this watercolor paper is very thick. The foil quill foil I'm using is called Goldfinch and I got this at my local Michaels but I thought at least for this experiment having it pre-cut and everything would be kind of nice to make it quicker and easier to work with. So I laid that out and then I'm going to start working with these magnets. So the instructions kind of show you to you know slide the magnet over but I think in the end I decided the best thing would be to just put the first one down as is. And then the second long one, I pushed the foil along to get it nice and tight. And then I used the short one at the bottom. And then the, top, the last one I used at the top, pulled that tight as well. Clearly, I didn't follow the instructions, but it turned out okay anyway. And let's take a look at the result. So I used the foil quill in my Cricut. And this is the result when I finished. You can see that the foil quill made the markings. And this is an ice cream cone. It's an image from the Amy Tan USB stick. The image foiled beautifully. Now I'm working on a video to show how I made this card from start to finish, including using the USB file. So keep an eye out for that. It'll be published soon. And you can see here, the finished result is perfect. So let's get to some tips and tricks. First, I really like my idea here for a permanent mat. It seems to hold it well and it stores easily too. Second, be careful of these guides that are in your machine. You'll want to avoid the rollers going over the magnet because that's going to create a lot of pressure and it might have trouble bringing it in. But in addition to that, it could harm your machine. It could make it so that something cracks or breaks. And to me, this is a bigger warranty issue with our machines than the foil quill itself. I'll show you more about what I mean. See here, the roller would go right over the top of my magnet and that would create a huge amount of pressure which again could crack or break things inside your machine. Now on my Explore, it takes a little bit of effort to get those rings to move, but once they do, then you've freed up the space underneath your guide bar here so that your mat can go through without getting caught on anything. Okay, I think it's time to talk pros and cons. I have four basically of each. First of all, I could use a dedicated mat for the foil quill and I was able to use an old mat that I was about ready to throw out. So it's always good to use something again and recycle it. And this mat, as you can see, I always date the, when I open them and this one came from October of 18. So it's been well loved and used. Now, because I've created a kind of a permanent mat set up for it, this makes it store really easily with my other mats on a hook. And that's number two for the pro. And thirdly, it's convenient and quick to use it this way. I, because it's with my other mats, I just pull it out when I want to use it. And my magnets are there already. Everything is together. And I anticipate this being really quick and easy to pull out and use. The fourth pro is probably the most obvious, and that's that you don't need to use washi tape to hold down your foil. So that makes it quicker and neater, and it's not going to tear off pieces of your gold foiling and that kind of thing when you're working with it. For most of the foiling I'm going to do, this mat is going to be perfect and I'm going to, I think, really enjoy using the magnet system. So let's talk about the cons. Well, the first one is, is that you might still need washi to keep paper in place. 
that's sort of unfortunate, but it may be required because, of course, the magnetic mat doesn't have any adhesive on it, and to keep that paper in place, you may need that washi. The second thing is you can't cut on it, or at least it's not recommended to be cut on. And you can kind of understand why. If the blade were putting in scratches into your mat, it would eventually lead to a rough mat, and a rough mat could lead to poor foiling results. So if you're going to cut something out, I, I would recommend you stick with the method of using your mat, use your uh, washi tape and foil and then cut because it will be very difficult to get your cut to match your foil if you need to take this off and, and then attempt to cut it. The fourth and final con for this is that I wish it came with one more long magnet because then it would have more flexibility than just having the two long and these two short. So I suspect they will sell additional magnet packs and I'll probably end up buying one. And that's too bad because I really prefer to make one purchase and be done, don't we all? So again, that's a big negative for me on this one. All right, so we're now at a point where I want to give you a little bonus. If we look at the packaging that the magnetic mat came in, there is this little inset here and it's showing what looks like the foil quill pen attached to a stylus which would allow us to draw with it and you know write freehand or whatever and it says it also works with the foil quill freestyle pen so that was intriguing to me I went ahead and did some Google searching and I couldn't find it anywhere except at a UK site in other words uh, England and on that site they were taking pre-orders so it is not available there yet or at least it wasn't as of today when I looked uh, and I couldn't find it anywhere in US sites that even mentioned it, uh, much less had it for pre-order. So perhaps this is coming to us, I would think it, it must be. And it may be that they had some delays with this uh, freestyle pen in manufacturing. Maybe they intended for this to come out at the same time since they're advertising that on this package. But as we know, sometimes things don't go as we plan and perhaps uh, that is why we have not heard anything about the pen. I want to give credit to many viewers who commented on my channel on other foil quill demonstration videos that they thought that the pen could be used or the nib could be used by itself for writing. And I think that's true. This area doesn't seem to get very warm. It's warm, but it's not hot in my experience with my machine anyway. And if you would put the holder on here, and use it that way you would definitely be safe from burning yourself so long as you were careful and you continue to hold in the right place but this could be used on the mat and probably work quite nicely so I will uh, show that sometime later in another episode about the foil quill I just didn't really have time this this go round but I'm pretty sure we're gonna hear more about writing and using the freestyle pen before I go this is the card I ended up making with that foil quill design I'll get a little closer here so you can see it. But did a very nice job and then I watercolored this using my Zig Clean Color markers. I just made a fun little birthday card. So again, I'm going to have instructions and show you how I did the watercoloring and all that in a future video. I do hope you enjoyed seeing my unboxing and demonstration with the pros and cons of the new foil quill and magnetic mat. I'll be back soon with more foil quill demos and projects. Well, once again, thank you for joining me here today. I really appreciate you visiting and I've put up here uh, the link to subscribe to my channel and also to a couple more videos that I think you might be interested in seeing if you like this one. So I hope to see you back soon, but until then, keep crafting. Bye.